Alrighty, we're looking here at question number three from the 2014 free response exam. And you see that we a student is given a standard galvanic cell represented above. There's a copper electrode, a tin electrode. As current flows through the cell, the student determines that the copper electrode increases in mass and the tin electrode decreases in mass. So the first two parts here, A and B, identify the electrode at which oxidation is occurring. Okay, and when we see oxidation as far as our electro cells are concerned, then we have, we know that this is the anode. Explain your reasoning based on the student's observations. Okay, that's kind of key, based on the student's observations and the observations were that the copper electrode increases in mass the tin electrode decreases in mass yes you'll be given um, standard reduction potentials but they want you to figure out based on the students observations not on the reduction potentials okay and then part B piggybacks to that as the mass of the tin electrode decreases where does the mass go okay so again losing electrons we would see that atoms would lose electrons, they'd go through the wire, and those atoms would then turn into ions and go into solution. So the anode, where oxidation occurs, that electrode gets smaller. So because of that, we know that the tin electrode and the tin half cell is where oxidation is occurring. That is our anode. And then part B, as it says, where does the mass go? As the the tin electrode is losing mass as tin atoms become tin ions in solution. All right, another thing to note that we'll need a little later, notice the solutions that we're working with, copper nitrate and tin nitrate, and they're both uh, two nitrates, so we know that we have copper plus two ions in here and tin plus two ions in here. So our next part says, here's an expanded view of the center portion of the salt bridge shown in the diagram below. So they want us to draw and label a particle view of what occurs in the salt bridge as the cell operates. Omit solvent molecules, so we don't want any waters, and use arrows to show the movement of particles. So back in our diagram, we notice that we have a potassium nitrate salt bridge. So we want to know where's the potassium ion going and where's the nitrate ion going. So again, the anode is losing mass because tin atoms, I'm sorry, tin ions are going into solution. Tin atoms are turning into tin ions. Over on the other side, the copper electrode is gaining because the ions are leaving solution and plating onto the copper electrode. And so on the left hand side, we are losing positive ions, so that's why the positive potassium ions are going to go over there. And on the right hand side, we're gaining positive tin ions, so the nitrate ions are going to go over there. And remember, this is all done to keep the charges balanced so that the cell can keep working. So in our drawing, the potassium ions are going to the left the nitrate ions are going to the right. Now it says a non-standard cell is made by replacing the 1 molar solutions with 0.5 molar solutions. The volumes in the non-standard cell are identical to those in the standard cell. Even though we're not given it directly, whenever we see that we're changing concentrations, you can reference the Nernst equation just because they don't give it to us in the packet doesn't mean that you can't use it to prove something or to calculate to prove something with a calculation you can use the Nernst equation in theory to answer which I'll show you here but you could also actually calculate it and so part one says is the cell potential of the non-standard cell and here we see greater than less than or equal to the cell potential in the standard cell and please justify our answer okay so what we see is we're going from one molar solutions down to 0.5 molar 
if the concentrations are the same, Q is going to be the same. Okay, so 1 molar over 1 molar, Q is 1. 0.5 molar over 0.5 molar, Q is 1. Our cell potential is going to change if we have different um, values of concentrations that give us a different Q value. So here what we see, the cell voltage is going to be equal to or stay the same because for both cells the Q value will be the same as both of the solution concentrations are the same. And you can show, it would be nice of you to show Q is the tin over the copper. We always have our um, anode ion over the cathode ion. And again, you could pull out the Nernst equation and plug and chug and show that both of the E values are the same or show that however you want to mathematically. But this should be fairly obvious to us that if our Q value is not changing, if, if, then our cell is value, our cell potential is not going to change. What does change though is when there's less concentrated solutions, we're not going to have this cell running as long. And so that's what this says. Both the standard and non-standard cells can be used to power an electronic device. Would the non-standard cell power the di device again for the same time, longer time, or shorter time compared to the standard cell? And again, please justify your answer. The more concentrated the solutions, the longer the cell will run. Less concentrated, it won't last as long. Because what's driving this cell, once you click it together, the copper ions are plating over here, whereas over here we're adding more ions into the solution. So once there's no more copper ions to plate out, bye bye cell's all done. So you can talk about it that way, that the non-standard is going to run shorter because your supply of ions or your supply of copper two ions is going to run out quicker, aka the reaction will reach E equals zero much, much sooner. All right, the last parts to this question. In another experiment, the student places a new tin electrode into a fresh solution of one molar copper nitrate. Okay, so Without the salt bridge, we're just like plopping in the electrode into the solution. Using information from the table above, write a net ionic equation for the reaction between the tin electrode and the copper nitrate solution. And of course, we want one that would be thermodynamically favorable, which means we would have a positive E naught value. Justify that the reaction is thermodynamically favored. So you can. Um, talk about the f and, and calculate E naught and get a positive value or you can also reference because these are the same chemicals we had earlier that when we had tin and copper hooked up that tin was the f site of oxidation and copper is the site of reduction okay but when we look on our table they tried to goofy up a little bit by adding the copper plus one and the tin plus four um, reduction potentials. We don't want those because we know that we've got copper nitrate two nitrates so it's plus two. So you want to focus on and make sure that you use the copper plus two potential and the tin plus two. So when I look up there this is the more positive this is the cathode. Okay and so that's reducing and this is the anode and that's our oxidation and so what we have here is our copper 2 ion plus tin is making copper plus our tin 2 ion that gives our positive E naught value of 0.48 volts so therefore the reaction is thermodynamically favorable or like I said you can reference the cell observations from previous from the beginning part that showed that tin is in fact being oxidized and copper is being reduced when that cell was hooked up that was obviously thermodynamically favored.
Oh, sorry. <laughs> the question's up here. The second part, last thing here. Calculate the value of delta G naught for the reaction and to include units. So delta G, if you remember, is negative NF E naught. So if you just calculated E naught and you got your 0.48 volts, fantastic. If you chose this way to answer, then now you would have to calculate E naught. Big thing here, again, always choose the proper N. This was, wasn't so bad because they were both plus 2. So we have 2 moles of electrons, Faraday's constant, and our E naught value. You could have just, you didn't have to use dimensional analysis. You could just have 2 times Faraday's constant times the E naught. And just be careful when we're using Faraday's constant and Coulombs, our answer is going to come out into joules. So you could leave it as 93,000 joules or change it to 93 kilojoules and make sure you have the proper sign thermodynamically favored and it's in our equation so it should be a negative value and since we only had 0.48 volts that's why we put 93,000 joules or 93 kilojoules watch those sig figs all right hope this helps and I'll see you soon